Adobe released a big noise reduction update for Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw. Same feature inside of both of them. I thought we'd take a deeper look into it in this video. I did another video where I just went over all new features that came out. Uh, this is April of 2023, but let's take a deeper look at noise reduction. What I wanna do is I wanna show you how it works. We're gonna jump into the develop panel here. You can see that we have a new denoise button down there. So I wanna show you how it works. And that's pretty easy. There's not much to it. And then I wanna look at some examples. I wanna show you how it used to be. And then I wanna show you how it is now. And I've even got a couple of examples where I'll even compare it with a plugin that I use. And at the end, I'll give you my final review. Am I gonna to switch to this and not use my plugin anymore or not? We'll take a, we'll talk a little bit about that toward the end there. Okay, so first off, we got our uh, we got our raw photo open. So it's gotta be a raw photo. You're not gonna get this with a, a JPEG or a TIFF or a PSD. It's gotta be a raw photo. Make sure you do your Lightroom and Photoshop updates. So this is 12.3 for Lightroom Classic, 15.3 for Adobe Photoshop Camera Raw. They are the same exact thing. They contain the same features. Uh, and also always go to Adobe if you've got questions on getting those updates. From here, uh, we come down to the detail panel. So what's the only thing that's changed is we still have our old manual noise reduction. You'll see a little arrow that you might have to twirl open to see that. So if you don't see it originally, you might have to twirl that arrow open, but you still have all those. It's just closed now. And what you have now is a denoise button inside of there. So you're gonna click on that and it's gonna open up the enhance window here. Okay, this photo, it's, I didn't really show you, but we, we do have to pixel peep a little bit because number one, that's what's being happening. You know, we're, we're taking these high ISO photos um, and we're cropping in tighter to them, which doesn't make noise worse, but it makes the noise, brings it closer and it appears to be worse, okay? Um, and then at the same time, this is video. Video inherently smooths everything out. So I have to zoom in to show you what it looks like because it wouldn't look as bad in the video. But this is what we're dealing with, 12,000 ISO. Let's click on the denoise button down there. I can move this around. Let's get to something with edges. And really, really simple. There's uh, This is the enhance window. It's the same window. We've had raw details and super resolution. I'm not gonna cover those in those video. They are not new. Denoise is what's new. You get one adjustment here. Once, once it renders, you can move this adjustment slider pretty freely and see what it's gonna look like. Uh, this is zero, this is 100, which to me tends to look a little smooth and plasticky. I'm ending up somewhere in the 50 to 60 range here, okay? You can click on the preview, click, hold it down to see your before, let go to see your after. So I don't mind a little bit of noise, a little bit of grain in that background. I don't think it's bad and I think it makes it look like a photo. That's how a photo should look. Now at the bottom here, uh, estimated time to complete 25 seconds. My computer is about a year and a half old. It's an Apple, it's got one of those M1 chips in it. So that's pretty roughly about the, the amount of time that it's taking. Uh, it will create a DNG file, okay? So I've opened up my raw photo and I'm not somebody to convert to DNG. I believe it's solving a problem that doesn't exist. So I don't convert to DNG. So it will duplicate the file and create a DNG. That was where it will let you also put that into a stack to help keep things organized. When you're done, you just click on this enhance button and it'll run that. I'm not gonna put you through the 30 seconds and just keep in mind if you're using a plugin, well, that plugin would have required you time anyway. So yeah, it's not super quick, but if you're using a plugin to do this before, I think your time is probably gonna be just as fast, if not maybe a little bit quicker here inside of Lightroom. So this is our new enhanced noise reduction photo. It actually appends that to the name of the photo so you'll be able to tell uh, which one it is. And if I were to zoom in here, you can see, I mean, it, it's fantastic. It is, I, I knew Adobe would do this. I I didn't know that they it was gonna be as good. I, I think it, it, the results are, are fantastic. I believe like the noise reduction plugins out there, it it does a great job at remo removing noise, but it also looks like it does some sharpening on top of it. So it really usually eliminates the need for me to do any sharpening after it. Uh, it is a copy of the photo, but you can still go back and do all of your other things to the photo that you normally would. As far as workflow, Adobe recommends you can do it in any order you want. They recommend that anything with the healing brush and anything with masking should be done later. So typically you might come in and do some basic toning to the photo and then I would head and do, you know, I'd crop it as well and then head over and do your noise reduction on that photo there. But typically you wanna do anything healing and anything mask related after you do your noise reduction. 
So let's take a look at Photoshop and let's look at some layers and see like what the old noise reduction looked like and the new noise reduction looked like because there's no other settings to go over. Um, but I think this will give us a, a good a good understanding of, of how far it really has come. Uh, these are all going to be wildlife because that's what I shoot, but you can do so the, the same test if there's another genre that you wanted to check out. Also, this is a great time for a very, very quick 30 second word from our sponsor. Um, you saw a couple wildlife photos in this one. If you are into photographing wildlife, I've got a great course on editing that wildlife. It's a topic that I find a lot of people don't talk about, uh, especially, you know, think of it as a landscape, right? We have harsh light sometimes, we've got dark shadows, we've got bright highlights, uh, we've got distractions, all those things that make editing wildlife just a little bit different from how we'd edit landscapes. And I've got a really popular course, very affordable, very easy to get through uh, that will help you with some of those wildlife photos that you have. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at some layers. We've got one photo here, ISO 6400. And again, we have to pixel peep because it just, you wouldn't see it if you didn't. Um, all right, so what you're gonna see, this is the total before photo no noise reduction or sharpening done to it. This is the noise reduction in the old Lightroom. This is the noise reduction in the new Lightroom. So old, new. I always thought the old one did a pretty good job on the noise, it just killed all the details. All right, and that's what I found throughout all these examples. This is the actually the least wowing example of them and it's still pretty good, but again, old way, new way and just in case you want to see i use topaz photo ai i know there's other apps out there this is just what i use um and you know a lot of people will disagree on that but you know inter opinions on the internet are worth what you pay for them but this is topaz photo ai's noise reduction on it i only did this for a couple of them so this is lightroom's new noise reduction this is topaz photo ai new noise reduction they're both good you know everybody's going to have a different thought on it but they're both good okay Let's take a look at the next one here. So another Eagle. So this one is 6,400 ISO. Again, let's take a look. That is the before photo, no noise reduction done. This is noise reduction in the old Lightroom. Noise reduction in the new Lightroom. Fantastic, just does a great job. Uh, let's see here. Next one we got, little ruffled feathers. And we've got, again, uh, old original version of the photo, no, no no noise reduction, old Lightroom noise reduction, new Lightroom noise reduction, old, new, just hands down, much better. And then this is the Topaz version. So this is the Lightroom version. This is the Topaz version. Again, both, both pretty good. Uh, let's see here, uh, let's get to some detail. This is the monkey, so 12,800 ISO and we can see our original photo, old Lightroom noise reduction, new Lightroom noise reduction, hands down, not even a contest, old Lightroom noise reduction, new, fantastic. And then finally, one more example here, I think we got a little Kingfisher, again, 12,800 ISO. Zoom in, this one's pretty good. That's the original photo, no noise reduction, this is the old Lightroom way. This is the new Lightroom way. Again, old, new. So great results, just, just simply fantastic from, from what they've done there. So that leaves us with a question. What about if we're somebody that uses a plugin for noise reduction and now we have what Adobe just did? What do you do? And I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I'm, I'm almost put a little bit on the spot because I didn't expect it to be this good. I don't really check betas. I only check betas for the new big yearly release that comes out each fall. So I didn't even know this was coming until today. Um, so it, it does put me a little bit on the spot because I didn't expect it. I knew Adobe would come out with noise reduction. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was because they came out with, with like a super resolution image size enhancer thing. And I, I didn't really think it was any better than what I could do inside of Photoshop. So I just didn't expect the noise reduction to be as good as it really is. And even then I thought when they did it, well, it's not gonna look sharper and it actually does look like there's sharpening or something and of details happening inside of there. So we need to look at this from a few different groups because I don't know that there's a one size fits all. What I would say is if you're somebody that doesn't, like maybe you bought an app, but you don't use it a lot, okay? Once a month, forget about it. You've got Adobe, 
it's a gift. You've got great noise reduction. Move on. Decision made, okay? If you're somebody that does this a lot and you do a lot of low light, high ISO, especially fast action photography, then I think you need to look at your workflow, okay? And which one fits better for you? Um, for me, as I said, I, to me, when I use Topaz and I'm going on two years of a workflow, it just works for me. I'm, I'm one of those willfully ignorant people. I find something that works and I don't wanna go look at other stuff. I wanna move on to the better stuff in photography and better stuff in life and spend my time changing my workflow every day. So it, I've got a certain workflow that works for me and it looks and I'm used to the way that it looks. So of course Adobe looks a little bit different. So I've just gotta figure that out and I'll, I'll probably do a follow-up video in a month or so on this one. but. I think again, they're both, they're all great. I'm gonna lump all three, a Topaz DxO and On One all into one category of the plugins are great and produce similar results and Adobe is, is getting, I think, right up there. So the other thing is, is what other stuff do you do with the plugins? So if you're a Topaz user, whether you've got the individual apps or whether you got that photo AI that does it all, you've got sharpening and upsizing. If you did that, that might be reason to stick with what you have if you use those parts of those apps. Okay, on one has similar on one's got sharpening and upsizing in there as well. So again, that might be a reason to stick with that third party app if if you use those things a lot because one size fits all. I've never Adobe hasn't gotten there on the sharpening part yet. So they did it with noise reduction, but uh, to me the sharpening is still lackluster. Again, noise reduction actually makes the photo look sharper. So who knows on that one? So you've got that. Um, if you're somebody that's just looking for a quick workflow, I think they're both. Speed wise, I think they're actually both pretty close to each other. Okay. Uh, Lightroom's takes a little bit of time, but you know, the photo AI and Topaz for me didn't take that much longer. So it's not necessarily a speed thing. Um, so I don't necessarily know that would let speed be the deciding factor for me. What I would really do if I were you is do your own tests. Do your own tests like I did make layers, make duplicate copies, bring them in the Photoshop, compare them and see what you see. Your photography is going to be different. Your settings are going to be different. Your style is going to be different. Everything's going to be different. And you need to see what it looks like on your own photography. I don't think it's bad to just say for right now, don't make a drastic change. For right now, what you had works. I don't think what came out today is incredibly better or worse than it. So I would just start over time doing your own tests and seeing which one fits in your workflow a little bit better. Lastly, on another topic, there is a video that I did a while back on some of the portrait masking tools. I know we're talking about some different stuff here, but if you do some portrait masking, I did a really in-depth video on that topic. And if you're looking for some place to go next, that would be a great video to watch.